Mind over matter is a phrase sometimes used to describe what can only be found in movies, the ability to control things with your mind, whether it's making inanimate objects hover in the air or getting into someone else's head and making them do exactly as you please. It's not something that we can actually do in real life. But when we look into the science behind how our brains work, the capabilities our brains have are nearly as remarkable. So by looking into the control our minds already have, how being mindful can help make us happier and more productive, and how, being, how future technologies utilizing the brain can improve our futures, we will see that the capabilities our brains have might as well be something out of science fiction. So one common place where we often hear the term mind over matter is in sports when an athlete gets injured only to ignore the injury and continue playing, sometimes even scoring the goal that wins the game. They are consciously ignoring physical pain. Their mind has control over the matter. But this control is something that a lot of the best athletes actually share. One common characteristic among champion athletes is that they have the mental tenacity to overcome the mental barrier that all could be done is done. Oftentimes, most of us believe that we have physically exerted ourselves before we actually have. This creates a long-term mental barrier in which we believe is actually our physical limitations. But the best athletes are able to overcome this mental block and instead reach their maximum physical potential. While surpassing our athletic mental block probably won't turn us all into Olympic level athletes, it can make us stronger, stronger and healthier. But mind over matter doesn't just apply to pain. Every single day we use this concept. Our brains are made up of neurons and synapses. Neurons, which are the cells which transmit information throughout our bodies, have what are called synapses between them. We have over 10 billion neurons in our bodies and over 10 trillion synapses between them. Synapses form complex and intricate networks in our brains. But despite the fact that we have these complex networks in our brains, it's not actually enough to process everything going on at once. At any given moment, there are way too many details for our brains to handle. There are sights, sounds, movements, smells, and on top of that, we're forming thoughts about what we're seeing, what we just had for breakfast, and what we're going to do tomorrow. So, um, so, because our brains can't process all of this information at once, what do we do? The answer is selective attention. And no, I don't mean only hearing your mom say it's time for dinner and not the part where she says, go wash your hands. I mean the selective choices our brains must make at all times. The best example of this, as well as the most studied sense, is vision. At the primary visual cortex, our brains, um, the neurons in our brains, are divided into what can be called levels. These levels um, have different specialized skills. Throughout our lives, the different areas of our brains develop different specialized skills, and the neurons within those areas are specialized as well. So, in the visual cortex, the neurons at the primary level, which is labeled V1, process simple visual information, such as the outlines of an object. And then, as you go up the levels, the information being processed gets increasingly more complex. So, when we are presented with busy scenes, these neurons at the higher specialized levels have to selectively respond to the stimulus based on what has been beneficial in the past. This means that not every bit of information is actually being processed. Only certain details are being comprehended. For example, if you're out on a busy street, you may notice a bright yellow car passing by, pretty birds flying around, or the heat of the sun, but not all at once. And from person to person, the details that are selected as most important are often different. And because of this, this raises an interesting idea. 
if what we think and do is based on what we perceive, this would explain why we all have different beliefs, do different things, and have different wants. So even though we have, uh, even though we all live in the exact same world, our individual realities may actually be very different. And that is why our reactions are very different as well. But when we are mindful, we can actually have better and happier lives. One way to do this is through meditation. Studies found that compared the brains of Buddhist monks had been meditating for many years, and the brains of new meditators found that the brains of the Buddhist monks actually had increased amounts of folds and wrinkles in their brains. While this may sound really weird, the increased amount of surface area from the folds and wrinkles are actually associated with increased amounts of gray matter. Gray matter is the parts of our brains which deal with cognitive reception and um, interaction. And because of this, whenever there is increased density of gray matter, there's increased intelligence. So the study found that the Buddhist monks who had been meditating for many years, their brains had increased density of gray matter in the areas of the brain associated with empathy. But we don't have to devote our lives to meditation in order to see the benefits. Studies found that when people began meditating for around just 30 minutes each day for eight weeks, the parts of their brain associated with learning and memory had increased amounts of gray matter while the parts of their brain associated with fear and stress had decreased amounts of gray matter. The neurons in our brain form connections based on what we do. By taking time to meditate or even just be mindful, we are making a conscious effort to make our lives happier and less stressful. Additionally, this mindset of mind over matter can be helpful when it comes to focus. This is because at any moment, we have access to the entire world at our fingertips, and this makes it really easy to get distracted, whether we are doing work, chores, or even things that are supposed to be fun. We often get distracted and don't finish the task. We hop back and forth between different things. But we actually have control over this. I hope that the information I presented to you today has made you aware of the power your minds have, and being aware of this, we can get past distractions and be more productive. So, by being mindful, we can become more empathetic, less stressed, and more focused. But what can this mean for our future? With new technologies, we are learning more about the brains than ever before. A study done by UCLA found that, um, a study done by UCLA studied the impact of um, the mind's ability to influence images on a computer screen. This was done with patients who had intracranial depth electrodes implanted in their brains for clinical reasons. The goal was to get the patients to manipulate the images on the screen by just using their thoughts. The patients were presented with four different images on the screen, and they were instructed to focus on one. What was supposed to happen is a certain group of neurons would be excited, which the electrodes in their brain would sense, thereby brightening that particular image on the screen. Overall, the success rate was 70%. By just using their minds, they were able to influence what was happening on the screen. And this could impact our futures because as technology improves, we may one day be able to conduct full internet searches and computer operations without even lifting a finger. So when we, while we might not be able to make objects hover in the air or manipulate someone into doing exactly what we want, what we can do with our brains is pretty remarkable. We already have so much control over reality. And in the future, technologies could make things even better. And by being conscious of the power our minds have over reality, we can do the things that will make our lives, um, 
we can do the things that will make us smarter, happier, and more productive. Thank you.